Reverse mortgages get a bad rap. You may have heard it floating out there that reverse mortgages are a bad thing. This is such a huge myth. The truth is reverse mortgages can be extremely valuable for certain people. And it's not a perfect loan program. As a reminder, there are no perfect loan programs. The loan program that is best is what's best for you in your situation. For example, I had a client a couple of years ago and she was an older lady. She was about 78 and she had just lost her husband. So they went from having a two income type of source to when he passed away, her income was the lower of the two, his pension went away, and her income dropped dramatically. Well, fortunately, she had a home that they had owned for 50 years, and she didn't owe much on it. I think it was about $60,000, but she was in a situation where she still had a payment on the mortgage, and her income had reduced so dramatically that she just didn't know what to do. She wasn't ready to move into a different type of home. And she got to me through the real estate agent who said, look, she's not ready to sell. She wants to stay in her home. What options exist? And so as we started to dive into the details, it's one of the best stories ever because we were able to help this borrower stay in her home, which is what she ultimately wanted. And we were able to pay off her mortgage so she no longer had a payment. And she had so much equity that we were also able to set up a monthly income revenue stream. So now she was able to tap into some of that equity and live and not only live, be able to do some of the repairs that her older house very much needed. In addition to having money set aside to go and travel and live her best life. When I think about all of the letters I received over the years, that was one of the most touching and most gratifying because I was able to listen to her needs and find the loan program that best suited her. This is what it comes down to. Every loan program can be a good option, but not every loan program is a good option for everybody. So having those conversations and understanding what the goals are and listening to our clients, that's what this is about. Reverse mortgages are no different. A reverse mortgage is going to allow someone who is 62 years old or older to access the equity in their home if they currently own a home and they have equity. And that equity can be used in a variety of different ways. Here are five myths about reverse mortgages that I'm gonna to debunk today. One, the lender will own my home if I get a reverse mortgage. That's not the case. Your name is still on the deed of trust. You own the home and it doesn't work really any different than a traditional mortgage. The sense that you're on the deed of trust and if you decide that you want to sell the home, then whatever your balance is on the reverse mortgage at that time in relation to the sales price of the home or the current market value, you're going to be able to sell the home and walk away with any equity that you have. When you pass away, this is often a question that comes up, what's gonna to happen to the house? It's the same type of scenario. So if there's equity in the home, your heirs will be able to take the home, put it on the market and sell it. Whatever the balance is on the reverse mortgage at that time gets paid off. Any remaining equity after the commissions and everything else that are paid goes to the heirs. So it works very similar in that respect, like a more common traditional home loan works. Now the caveat to this is important. On a reverse mortgage, instead of your loan balance going down, your loan balance is going to increase over time. And the reverse mortgages of today are going to map out for you what your loan balance might look like in five years of being in that reverse mortgage or 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. It can show you an estimate of that loan balance in relation to the estimate of the market value. But the market value is something that nobody really can predict of what that's gonna look like. So if you happen to live much longer than expected and maybe you're living until 115, good for you. At that point, there could be a point in time where you might owe more on the reverse mortgage than the current market value. So let's kind of walk through this. If that's the case, then you pass away, here's what happens. Let's say that you now owe X dollars on the reverse mortgage and it exceeds what your heirs can sell the home for. In that scenario, FHA is going to take the home back. The debt does not pass on to your heirs. They can move on and that remaining debt is just paid through FHA's mortgage insurance premiums. So 
I think just understanding that is so helpful. And this is such a big, important piece of this kind of loan program because there's so much fear out there that people are going to take your house or, you know, you're going to owe too much and then the debt's going to go against your heirs and things like that. All of that is just blah, 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 blah. So that's the scoop. Myth number two, can I get a reverse mortgage if I don't own my home free and clear? Absolutely, as long as all of the criteria on the reverse mortgage fits. For example, let's say that your market value is 500,000 and let's say you owe 400,000. In that scenario, based on your age, you may not have enough equity to obtain a reverse mortgage. However, if the market value is roughly 500,000 and you owe 100,000, then based on your age, then you may have in that scenario enough equity to be able to do a reverse mortgage refinance, pay off your current mortgage, still have access to some of that equity to be able to use in a variety of ways. So in summary, you don't have to own your home free and clear to be eligible for an FHA reverse mortgage. Myth number three, a reverse mortgage has a lot of out-of-pocket expenses. If you're doing a reverse mortgage on a refinance, then those costs are all built in to the refinance itself. So you're very limited on true out-of-pocket costs. There are two that I can think of. One, you're going to have to pay for your HUD counseling session up front to the HUD counselor. That's roughly a $200 fee. Two, the appraisal may be a fee that the lender charges up front prior to close of escrow. Outside of that, the cost on a reverse mortgage refinance is generally financed into the reverse mortgage. Myth number four, my Medicare or Social Security benefits will be affected. Keep in mind that with a reverse mortgage, that's your equity. So any revenue stream that you're gaining from that or any of that equity that you're tapping into will not impact your Medicare or your Social Security benefits. However, it could impact any Medicaid type of benefit. So it's always best to talk with your program administrator on those types of benefit programs just so we can be sure that none of that will be impacted by your reverse mortgage. And the fifth myth that I often hear out there is a reverse mortgage should be my last resort. And my question would be, well, what are your goals? And what is your specific situation? There are a variety of ways reverse mortgages can absolutely be a fantastic tool to leverage equity, to be able to live your best life, to have an additional revenue stream, all kinds of things. So I think just opening your mind and be able to get the facts. Talk with a reverse mortgage specialist, somebody that truly understands this loan because it is very unique. It's definitely not a last resort. It's just another option that we can bring to the table when talking with our clients. Now that we have debunked these myths, if you or someone you know is interested in seeing if they qualify for a reverse mortgage, please click the link below to schedule a personalized consultation with the Kelly Zitlow Group Mortgage Advisor today. We'd love the opportunity to help you, your client or family member with their financial goals. Be sure to watch my next video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more valuable mortgage education.